Hello and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Alkali. Here's your host, Alkali Bismuth. Hello everyone and welcome to Cooking with Alkali. I'd like to thank Status the Ferret for today's recipe. Today we will be making chicken riggies. Now I have now watched seven videos, read two different articles, read the original recipe given to me, and all I found out is one thing. There is no recipe for chicken riggies. <laughs> chicken riggies is a New York dish. It's actually apparently very popular out there, but seeing as I've never been, I've never had it. But the one thing I learned from all of my online research that I did while eating other forms of chicken... I want some chicken to eat. It is my favorite meat. <laughs> We've had so much chicken this week. I learned that since there is no exact recipe to do this, we are going to be doing this very differently. For everyone who lives, lives out of New York, I'm so sorry. This is going to be Chicago chicken riggies. And why don't you be polite, you stinking puss bag? Now, what chicken riggies is, is a chicken rigatoni. It's a spicy sauce that's going to go onto rigatoni noodles using a lot of chicken, and it sounds amazing. But every recipe I looked, looked at, whether it went from using cream to using Parmesan, whether it used a little bit of vegetables to a lot of vegetables, all of them were slightly different, using their own takes. So I'm going to do something a little bit different than all of them, and I'm going to take this recipe and make it my own. So to start, we're going to do exactly what you think we would when you were dealing with a fat, fat ferret, hmm. butter. There is too much butter on those trays. No, 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 senor. What? Not, not on those trays. No, sir. Uno, dos, tres. Now, this pan already has some blackened bits in the bottom. Now, what's that from? Like I said, we're making this a Chicago recipe, so we're actually going to finish it off with some blackened Italian sausage. And I did that because I wanted the bottom of this pan covered in that delicious carbon that forms on the outside of any kind of Italian sausage. So we're gonna use the butter, deglaze this a little bit, get the pan ready, and instead of just using butter fat, because this is what we're gonna be using to get all our vegetables. We're gonna get all the vegetable bowls, they're gonna be nice and soft to this pan. I'm going to add some more grease in the form of one spicy Italian sausage link that I cut out of the casing and just turned into ground sausage. Now what we're doing here is we're just going to use this to render it down. We're going to reduce down this sausage to get more of its delicious, fatty, spicy goodness into the beginning of this dish. Mm, yeah, but without the grease, all you can taste is the hog anus. So I'm just going to heat this up so this sausage is sweating until it's nice and browned. And that's what we're going to use to heat up our vegetables in. So while I'm stirring this, I can tell you what I did for the vegetables. In a traditional chicken rig, you're going to add a lot of onion. So I did put in one medium-sized sweet onion. One, uh, they're called a striped pepper out by me, but all it is is a cross between a yellow and an orange pepper. Mm -hmm. I'm mainly doing that for the color. Nice. Uh, so one uh, striped pepper, any pepper will do. You just want to get some of that flavor into here. Uh, and then the things that are going to add a lot of flavor, three jalapenos and two serrano peppers. Mm -hmm. So that's going to give this thing all of our spice. Listen to me, the spice must flow. So we've almost got this meat brown. It's going to continue to brown, and that's fine. That's what we want. By the way, if you notice I'm using a wooden spoon, always watch what kind of utensils you use. Uh, obviously, I'm using a non-stick pan here, so I didn't want to use anything metal. The wooden spoon is still going to be able to scrape the bottom, and like I said, I specifically heat it. All right. Oh, no. I specifically heated up some uh, sausage in this pan earlier to get that carbon on the bottom, so I'm going to want to scrape the bottom. A rubber spatula doesn't really scrape it as well, but with a wooden spoon, you can really get in there, scrape off the bottom, incorporate all this together. Don't it's just a giant mess. Don't scrape the bottom. Scrape the bottom. Never scrape the bottom. I'm honestly not trying to make this sound gay. No one is. It's just happening. To this, I'm adding all the peppers just at once, oh. and we're going to sweat all these. Those smell really good, by the way. Thank you. It took me all day to cut them. Uh, if, they, if you ever wonder 
why I don't show myself. Uh, doing a lot of the prep work on camera, because it takes me forever. I am not good at the uh, cutting and the, uh, honestly, I've tried to get better at it, but doing it the right way is a little bit more important than keeping my fingers out of the way. I mean, look at these things. Look at these, this would look weird. This would look weird. How would I flip people off if I lost fingers? Well, the good Lord didn't bless my wife with all 10 fingers. She's only got pointer and thumb pinky. Now, to this, there is one more vegetable we will be adding. Vegetable? There's one more spice, basically, that we will be adding, and that is the garlic. Now, notice I did not mention the garlic before this, and that is because garlic burns easily. I minced up some garlic earlier. It is ready to go right next to me. Nice. We are going to put that in at the last possible minute, because this time, we don't want to brown our garlic. We don't want the garlic to get covered in the grease. We don't really want to cook it and brown it because we want that garlic flavor coming through a little bit more pure and simple. In fact, the, one of the very few seasonings I've added to the ground chicken that we're going to be adding is a little bit of garlic powder. Not a lot because we're going to let the garlic do its work. Uh, so this is going to need to cook down until the onions start turning translucent until the peppers start sweating, and you're gonna see, as you move it around, the bottom of this pan, instead of being covered in that, yeah, instead of being covered in the uh, drippings from the sausage, now you're gonna have a lot of moisture in here, because all that moisture is cooking out of these vegetables right now. Remember, this part, this is the part of cooking that I think can intimidate a lot of people, <laughs> is just keeping things moving. Remember, it's really not as hard as it looks. All I'm doing is a spiral right here. But if you're ever worried about overcooking vegetables, all you have to do is keep them moving. Mm -hmm. If you can keep them moving, you'll always be able to see the progress that you are accomplishing, and you're going to be able to put a stop to it at any time. So yeah, it's a lot more work. You're gonna be standing over the stove longer, but I'll tell you this right now. If you're worried about a recipe like I am right now, if you've never done the recipe before, one of the easiest tricks in the book, keep everything moving. So I am doing this right now to make sure I do not overcook these vegetables. I do not want this to turn into a paste. That's what the tomato, uh, the crushed tomatoes is going to do in a little bit. When do you know it's done or is it just per vegetable is different? So done will be when the onions are slightly translucent Mm -hmm. When you move it around, you'll notice a lot more liquid on the bottom, mm -hmm. and you're, honestly, you're going to smell it. I wish I could describe the smell that you're looking for, but you'll start to recognize that the more and more you work with just sautéing or simmering uh, veggies. So okay. if you want to come close, this is getting close. Because yep. once enough. again, I'm not looking for this to be stew stewed. I want these vegetables to contain a little bit of their moisture. There it is. Yep. That is, flicking some stuff out. To that I'm adding one tablespoon of minced garlic. Now, this one I'm a little worried about because like I said, I want this garlic to really shine through. I don't know if the one tablespoon is gonna be enough. I think it will be, but I'm very used to cooking the garlic at the same time, so I'm not exactly sure. But we'll find out when this is all done, won't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, once I get that garlic nice and mixed in there, heating it up a little bit, but once again, we don't want to brown it, we don't want to cook it. There we go. Now, we've already got some moisture in this pan, but the bottom is not perfect. And as we all know, we want perfect bottoms. <laughs> Damn it, or else you're gonna have to scrape them. You gotta scrape them, you know. So, we're gonna do a little bit more deglazing on the pan, but we're gonna do that with a little bit more than a quarter cup of a dry white wine. I'm actually using a dry Pinot Grigio right now. Mm. And what we're gonna do here, because we did take some of the moisture out of these peppers, out of these onions, we're kind of putting that back in. So all we wanna do now is keep this moving, and you do have to keep this part moving until that wine is absorbed. Also making sure that you're scraping the bottom of the pan because that is your flavor. 
That's why we put the sausage in here. That's why we incorporated it all. It's not going to be a lot of grease. It was one sausage. So that grease is actually getting spread around here. It's going to help this thing. The wine is going to be an emulsifier. It's all going to combine into one disgustingly delicious mess. All right. So, Xander, can you see the mm -hmm. bottom of the pan? Yes, I can. Now, notice that I put in a little bit more than a quarter cup of liquid, but now as you move it around, you're really not seeing too much of that liquid anymore. That means you're ready for the next step. And that next step is the star of the show, chicken. I have here about, I don't know, two pounds of uh, uh, ground chicken meat. You could have used chicken breast and cut them up. You can really do anything, but because I want this sauce to go into a pasta, uh, I made it look like the nonsense that uh, McDonald's serves in the middle of a chicken nugget. <laughs> And all this is, once again, one second. This is the equivalency of, I took three chicken breasts, ground them up, seasoned them with a little amount of salt, a little bit more than that of pepper, and a little bit of garlic powder. Remember, if you're putting salt in, use garlic powder, not garlic salt. Now, we play the mixing game. We want to make sure that all these vegetables are incorporated into this. That's all I'm really doing right now. The beginning is a pain. It looks disgusting right now, but as this cooks, as this cooks down, you're going to see little chunks of chicken start to form. Bear in mind, there's nothing else in that chicken. It's just ground chicken, salt, pepper, and uh, garlic powder. So when this is done, you're going to end up with little cooked chunks of chicken, and since we're doing a sauce, since it's going into rigatoni, I wanted those little chunks. I want them to get into those pieces of rigatoni. Uh, and that's why I chose a ground chicken over a cut one. So, this is going to be cooking for a little while. I want to wait until the chicken has started to uh, actually cook down before going to the next step. So we're gonna come right back and show you what that looks like. See you in a moment, everyone. We're back, and now as you can see, that weird, pink, disgusting mess <laughs> has turned into crumbles, and this is what I was looking for. I wanted this chicken to crumble kind of like a, uh, a beef or a pork would if you put it into a spaghetti sauce. So that's kind of what I'm basing this off of, is a bit of a spaghetti sauce. So this nice, ground chicken turning into a crumbly mess and that is what we are looking for. Now watch, here's one of the ways you can tell. Okay. If I scrape the bottom of the plate, there is a little sauce at the bottom, a little bit of the juice, and that's what we're gonna be cooking down next. So as you move it, everything is staying apart. It's not all just sticking together, and that's what you want. Sticking together is what good waffles do. So now we're gonna add the rest of our liquids. To this, we add 30 ounces of crushed tomatoes, and this, Ooh. oh, this is what I have been waiting for. <laughs> this is going to give it that color, and this is really going to incorporate everything together. And after we get this mixed in, now once again, I am, I could have used a bigger pan or a smaller serving, but I am gigantic. <laughs> so this, I just want that incorporated, and now... I'm going to give it the reason to cook for the next 25 minutes. After okay. I get this all in, and all I'm doing, I'm going to the sides, I'm pushing the sides to the middle. If you watch, you'll see that that's actually stirring everything. Every once in a while, I'll hit the middle, mainly just to scrape the bottom, but I'm just going around the outsides and turning this into that beautiful pot red pasta color that you were all expecting on pasta. There it is, got it. <laughs> all right, now like I said before, the chicken is gonna be the star of this, so I'm gonna knock up the chicken one more time. I don't know what I expected. You could add water to this right now. You could just go that route. You're gonna to wanna to cook it down. So instead of just adding water, I found at the store on sale, chicken bone broth. Mm. Oh, if you've never had a good bone broth, I highly recommend it. It's really gonna bring out 
some of that flavor. I'm excited to try this. Uh, I hope I don't drop it. I'm going to drop it. And then I'm knocking it into the fire. Oh dear. That's normal. Oh, I'm starting to smell it now. This is... Mm. Okay, and the final ingredient before you're done, I'm going to put in a splash. A very healthy, respectable splash, like at a water park. At a water park, when a person that you didn't know, they splash you. You turn around, they have recognition. Yeah. But they were wrong. They thought you were somebody else. But they've already started splashing, so you got to splash back. So we put in a little splash. That's my life. Of cream. And that is going to give this some body. I never knew there were economics of water parks. There are multiple economics of water parks. Splashonomics. I'm going Lazy River. There's nothing better than drifting along in a tube and being into a river. It's the closest a man can get to being back in the womb. Incorporating this all together, once I see the color is uniform, once I see all of that white, creamy goodness go into the red, lighten the color all the way around, I am done with the sauce. So now we need to reduce this. So as you can see from there, this is a little watery right now. And that's okay, because we need all of these flavors to marry together. So we are going to finish stirring this and then set a timer for 25 minutes. Set it to medium heat. And you're gonna let this simmer. You're gonna let some of this liquid cook right off reduce this down back to that delicious hearty sauce that we're looking for. I'd say stirring every five minutes. Mm -hmm. Every five minutes, just give it a go. If you start feeling something stick, stir it more often. If nothing is sticking, you know, then it's about five minutes for the next 25 minutes should work. We've got about seven more minutes of simmering. So since we have seven minutes left, I took the rigatoni, which needed, the, the one I bought needed eight minutes to cook. So I'm going to undercook it by one minute. Why? Because we're gonna be putting the hot sauce in there. That's gonna complete the cooking. So the pasta is going right next to the sauce. And Xander, why don't you get in here and take a look at the sauce. Got it. This is what I was talking about with the reduction. Now, this is that nice, hearty sauce. And once you get to that with about seven, six minutes remaining, we're gonna put in the last of our ingredients. That being our cooked, remember I told you at the beginning, I got some of that char at the bottom of the pan. This is our spicy Italian sausage that's almost fully cooked. If you look at the pieces, you'll notice the middle is a little bit of pink left to them. Mm -hmm. That's what we were looking for. So I cooked those just to leave a little bit of pink in the middle, knowing that they were gonna cook fully in the sauce. That's gonna finish the cooking on those in the next few minutes. And there's no measurement to this again, a nice, generous handful of fresh grated Parmesan. Uh, I say fresh grated, uh, this was at Mariano's and it was two for five dollars, so I don't care. <laughs> and there we go, we're gonna get this incorporated and then we're gonna let this simmer till the very end until we have our noodles almost done. But make sure you mix all this in. You wanna make sure that those pieces of sausage are getting covered in your bubbling hot sauce. That's gonna complete the cooking and then everything is gonna to come together. Everything comes together. <laughs> People eating your food will be proud of you. They won't leave. They won't order pizza. <laughs> there it is. Now that, I'll be honest with you, I did not think the sauce would come out this nice, but that was exactly what I was looking for. All right, the sauce is getting close. You gotta keep an eye on your noodles. Don't forget to stir your noodles. And also, don't forget when you drain them, don't rinse them. Uh, there's a lot, uh, I basically just added them to a pot of boiling water. Uh, a good tablespoon of salt added to the water. Sometimes I add two tablespoons of salt. That flavor does come through, but you lose it all if you rinse your noodles. Don't rinse the noodles when they are done. So at this point, we're just waiting for our timer to go off. As we're 
we're finishing this up, I want to give one more shout out, a huge thank you to not only all of our Patreons, everyone who subscribes, and it's, this has been unbelievable, the amount of support that we have been getting from our community. You guys are wonderful. Thank you for everything. And a second giant thank you to Status, who sponsored this video. Yes. Status, I, uh, I realize we didn't make the New York Rickies, but I hope that this recipe is up to the New York standard, because I will be honest with you, I cannot believe what a great idea this was. Uh, I have not seen a local recipe that as I watched the seven damn videos it took to figure this thing out, everyone doing something different. Yes. Thanks Which, for commissioning this status, it smells really good. Oh yeah. Which by the way, now that you've seen the recipe and you're going to see the end product, feel free to play with this one. Um, phrasing? Uh, I watch people add everything into her from uh, greens to uh, olives, I almost added olives, but I know Xander's not the favorite. Yeah. Mushrooms, celery uh, at the very end, just for a crisp bite. Uh, one gentleman added Brussels sprouts, cut roasted Brussels sprouts, and that looked amazing. So, yeah, I think this is one of the few recipes that when I received it, I was comfortable just saying, okay, we're gonna Chicago this one. So with one minute to spare, grabbing the noodles, Trying not to spill hot water all over myself. Nice. Do not scald yourself. Kept them moving, so once again, the pot has nothing stuck to it. Turn off your heat, shake out the water. Always take care of your pot. Always take, do. Always take care of your pot. You know what you do with sexy marijuana? <laughs> what? You grind it. Oh no. There it is, there's the noodles. Here comes the chicken riggy. Yeah. Carefully. Carefully. Don't fuck it up. Uh, oh, I'm totally waiting to drop all of this onto the kitchen floor. I'm serious about this stuff. Holy crap. This sauce is thick. It is thick. This is amazing status. You are awesome. Thank you so much for giving us this idea. It's thick. There it is. It's so thick. It's so thick. It's so thick. Give it a stir. Coat all the noodles. And finally, just mm -hmm. to finish it off, a little bit more of the Parmesan in there. A little bit. You're gonna put some of that onto each individual plate. There it is, chicken riggies. We'll come back in a moment with our taste test. Awesome. All right, we did it. Chicken riggies. Chicken riggies. Well, I finished it off by throwing a little bit more of the Parmesan on top, a little bit of uh, fresh parsley, and finally, we're gonna test, obviously served with the same Prino Grigio oh. that I put into the chicken. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> happy Corona meal. Yes, happy Corona meal. Mmm. Mmm. Two hours later. The spice is nice. Oh my god. Mm. Status, thank you for the recommendation. So all of that is coming through, through every bit of the sauce. The onions take the forefront, and right now oh, I'm getting shit. that tingle in the back of my throat from the spice. There's like a really long like profile, like like it, it hangs with you. It's oh, great. that's this is a pasta with like aftertaste. It's really good. I highly recommend chicken riggies. And on the other hand, you saw my video. You saw how I did it. Do it your own way. In the comments below, tell us what you add or took out. I would love to know. Thank you all for joining us. I'm Alkali. I'm Xander. Thank you, everyone, and good night. All right. Oh my God, go away, I'm eating it. This is, this is my sin. <laughs> oh no, I was gonna turn off the camera. <laughs> oh my it's gonna, God. It's gonna get a kick off of YouTube. Mm -hmm. Finish your wine, young man. You're not gonna get any dessert. Well, now you lost. <laughs>